we're here at the 2023 Tough Like Roar main event. I'm starting on the fourth row after a 35th placement in the qualifying race. We've got six hours to go as far as you can on this brutal course. Lower line, no traffic down here, but I don't know if it helped me at all or not. Oh, whoa, there's tree, it's tight up in here. It's not very far in when we've got a little hold up on a hill climb here. Everybody's queued up until they're not. And suddenly people are going by. I'm like, no, no, no. I am budging up here. It causes some panic and everyone just starts bombing up it without even paying attention. And they're getting stuck. It's turning into a pile up up there. Some people are coming down. I just go. Oh, and I hit a rock in the middle of it. I couldn't see it. I could not see. And now I'm screwed. I'm not that far from the top. I try to go and it's there's it's so loose you're not getting traction. Go back down, people are flying everywhere. It is a disaster. This is the worst case scenario. In my head, I'm like, I blew it. I just blew the whole freaking race. I'm just so upset. I was so upset about this. It's not even a hard hill. It's nothing. It's like a piece of cake. You know, maybe too easy, and that's why I decided to go up it when I was blind. And and it didn't work out, but man, oh, I was mad. I was so mad. It might have been the right thing I needed because this put a little flame under my butt. A match, lit a match under my carburetor. And I am in just a charge mode. Get out of my way. Okay, I'm frustrated, but we got so much time. You know, that's the thing. It's like, all right, you might be almost in last place, but you've got six hours to make that up. So this is Sandra Gomez on the gas gas. You may have saw her on the hill. She got stuck there as well. She's from overseas, Alfredo Gomez's sister, and is an incredible rider. We'll see her a little bit throughout. But just note that she's this far back as well. She got stuck on that hill just like I did. So, oh, I make the pass. But it doesn't stick because I get myself caught on this tree, the fender around a tree. It's the worst. When the tree gets stuck between the fender and the tire like that, oh, it's the worst feeling. You're like, no, I'm going to bend my plastics. Really steep downhill, and then up. He'll climb out of it. Okay, we passed someone there. I have my work cut out for me. I gotta ride aggressive.
week in these videos, I try to give a good picture of what the terrain is like, and I, I do a lot of cuts to try to give a good picture to you guys watching, like, what, what is it like? And it is, it's just amazing. I mean, the camera does not do it justice, but it, I hope it does to a degree, because it is such an incredible place to ride. Like, this is just such cool trail. The problem with being this far back is it's slow going. We're in a line to get down this hill, and I'm like, come on, guys, let's go. But it's single file, and you really have to be careful on this down because there's an immediate stop at the bottom. I'm in a rampage mode at this point. I didn't even notice that's my cook on the right. That line is blocked. I go over here, I'm like, go for it. Just send it. Gomez had a good line. She went this way, so I'm like, all right, we'll try that out. Able to get around some riders here. I'm gonna force myself in. I mean, this is how you have to do it. Filled in with a lot of riders, so I have to take some of the less preferred lines through this rock garden. And that means more work, more finesse. And usually it needs, requires more skill that I don't know if I have. <laughs> but I'm going to try it. So, like, I, I'm kind of jamming my way through. It's working out. A lot of traffic on the left line there. So I decided to go down here to the right. I get set up on this. I'm just going to have to launch. Yes, Notice how calm and relaxed I am. I used to be a rammer, like you'd be gassed and throwing the bike and killing, killing myself. I'm getting better at being a cool cucumber, staying relaxed, and makes it so much easier. Sandra takes that line to the right of that tree. If you remember last year, I fell to the right off a high spot. It was a disaster. I'm not messing around with that. I'm going to the left, but she is picking through here fast. A little bit back there, one thing I didn't know what was going on was our boy Adam. His chain had come off and was jammed up real bad. Now, technically, I don't think anyone's supposed to be touching his bike, but we'll leave that between you and me. He gets it on, he's minutes behind, way behind. Back over to me, I'm working on getting through some traffic in 409 here. Picking people off one by one. I do have a, he a serious hesitation of taking a different line than the main line. I think it's because it's always bit me in the butt. However, I think I, I'm, I've changed my tune on it. No guts, no glory. You gotta go for it. And I think that's why some of the top riders, the better riders, are, are able to do some maneuvers out there that nobody's willing or capable of doing. So just having that extra skill set to hit something a little trickier goes a long way. Trickier section here, gotta really finesse it. Think about where you're putting your wheels so you don't get caught into a hole. Oh, I remember scraping my left foot peg on that. I was like, oh, if I hit that and bounce down into that bottom, what a nightmare. Yeah, I know this is a hard enduro, but I'm telling you some of this trail here, where it's not hard enduro, but it's 
borderline harder than what you would see in a normal enduro if that makes any sense I really eat this stuff up this is right where like my skill level and my speed kind of combine and I'm like I'm in my zone I enjoy this but that might just be me I know some people will just want the beat down to begin at the starting line I don't know I like a little speed sections in here to break it up and it's a good rest after 409 it also gives the riders who just want to come out and see how far they can go a good time. I mean, who wouldn't want to rip this trail? This is sick. I'm grooving and I didn't even look at where I'm headed. Whoa! Had to split second shoot up that wall. tank here because I didn't even mention this this is the Keystone challenge we've got six hour hard enduro today tomorrow is the shotgun hard scramble which is another five hour hard enduro at a different property just up the road from roar here so we've got another race to do after this whoa this is a tricky spot able to get around those guys making some passes out here. Alright, it's getting a little trickier. These peaks are sketchy. You look to your left and right and are like, oh man, no room for error. Go through the first checkpoint. And then there was this tricky hill climb. Woo! Yeah, yeah, a little jam up here. Hey, that's Riley Bender. So I decided to take an interesting line here to get around Riley. Bigger holes here, it's untouched, but it actually went pretty well. And I'm just gonna go for it. See, I, and this is the thing, I said it in my Battle of the Goats video, I can't be out there chit-chatting anymore. I can't be letting people go by. After you, sir, I, I'm going for it. I'm not gonna be nice. I'm just gonna be competitive. I'm gonna put my head down and I'm gonna go. But after the race, we'll have a beer and, and, and laugh and giggle. Like right here, I think it was Gary Fridley and Jim Senecal. I should have gone, just go and up at that hill. I should have just shot by him. But instead I waited. Next time I'm not, I'm just gonna go. It does feel like a little bit of a jerk move. I always get mad at the people that cut around a queue, like a line. But then again, if Tristan Hart did it, I wouldn't think anything of it. So if you never go after what you want, you'll never have it. There's an inspirational quote for everybody. I hope I inspired someone to go out there and run someone over. Okay, no, cut that. Woo. I'm starting to drop into the pit of McMisery. I'm able to get around Gary and pick my way through this pit. It's Jim Seneca up in front, and then we come into the hill climb out of here. I wanted to just keep it going up to the left. See that line? Just go up all the way. But there's some people scattered up on it, and I didn't know if I could make it clean. So I get lined up here. I could have made it, but there's too much commotion here, so I dropped down to the bailout line, and that's where Adam comes right through here. He made up some time. Some cool trail along here, and then I'm messing with Adam coming in with my pass call. 
up here and I had the camera off for a little bit I'm trying to preserve some battery because I was in the heat of the race I don't want to be swapping batteries stopping so I kept myself going and had the camera off for a little bit till I got to this section this is tough this is a really tough one right here and wouldn't you know it right when I got in here the camera died there wasn't really anywhere good I could stop and replace the battery, so I just kept going through the wrong side of heaven here. Get it buckle, we got people passing me. Tom helps me out and replaces the battery. We're re-geared up and we're rolling. But here's the thing. I gotta do it again. So they had it set up this year where you do two passes through the wrong side of heaven. Which is crazy, but also really cool. So we'll get to see it again, don't worry. Although I'm doing some bizarre acrobats and yoga on the bike to get up through here. So this is a checkpoint that sends you back right, through it. Zach, you made it, buddy. <sighs> now you just gotta do it again. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. Up the hill. I gotta say, what a club Roar has here. I mean, everybody is so passionate, enthusiastic about putting this race on. They, it's incredible. They do an incredible job. Yeah. Now this is the Panama section. And it's pretty gnarly. There are some sketchy drops. A couple tough spots in here. Yeah. makes things look flatter than they are but I mean look we're dropping down I mean this is a couple feet and you're shooting up quite a bit of height here not easy going it's funny though because you know watching it back on video it doesn't look that bad then there's a comment dude I could go right up that thing dude trust me it is not as easy as it looks it looks easy for me watching this back, and I, I'm the person. Yes, Zach. Yo. Woo. All right, we're going. Oh, boy. Good luck, bro. This looks brutal. Look at this section. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. That's not the line. Back her up. If I was good, I could go over that, but I, this was where I was supposed to go. Note to self, I gotta be hitting this stuff with more speed so I can carry myself over it. But I was getting tired. I started making some mistakes here at the end of the section. I'm like, falling apart. Panama's getting to me. Why is it called Panama? That's a good question. Let's let me check something here. Van Halen, of course. A lot of the sections are named after songs out here. So cool. We're working our way through Panama. If this was playing out here, I'd probably have a little more pep in my step. We're getting through it. Slow and steady. So 
So there it is. Yes, sir. Now I go left and do it again. How's it going? Good. I need, I, okay, I gotta go. I gotta go. The wrong side of heaven, take two. Oh, man, you got it has definitely got to be one of the coolest sections in Hard Girl because you've got all the spectators and it is such a challenging but unique section. It's not crazy hard with the traction on these rocks. But it's also kind of, I mean, it is pretty hard. It's pretty crazy. Like your average weekend warrior rider is not going to be like, oh, I'll go do that section. Yeah, yeah, the back. Thank you. Take some water to cool down here. Thank you, guys. If this crowd was at the entire length of the track, I'd probably win the race. a little better the second time around. I had a couple hiccups. To keep the video at least a somewhat watchable length, I have to cut all the gibberish out, me stopping and taking a breath or, or getting stuck here and there for a few seconds. So in reality, full disclaimer, this video makes me look better than I am. So you already saw this section on my first pass through, so we'll keep it going. Yeah, baby. No quarters next. Look out. Oh, all right. No quarter. This is what got me last year. This is this pit I got into, and I thought I was dead. I thought I wasn't going to get out of here. That was last year's race. This year, I know what to expect, and... I still was blown away. I mean, look at the drop into this thing. Oh, You're yeah. going into a massive crack. Crack is whack. I think it, in my head I was like, take it easy. You got to take it easy in here. Don't get yourself overburdened down in here. I actually think that's a, now that I, I reflect back on this, I think that was a mistake. I think my slower speed made it harder for me to get through this section than everything else. So I'm taking it very cautious and conservative, but almost too much to where I'm like not hitting things with enough speed. And that results in more effort and more energy expelled because you're hitting things a couple times or you're just not, or you're pushing over them. So for reference, we're two hours into the race. There's four more hours of time left. This is towards the end of the first lap. So we're actually in a pretty good position, except the second lap opens up all of the really hard sections and more, and is much longer. It's like a grand uh, finale. Up, baby. What am I doing? What the f am I doing? <laughs> and then I have a breakdown here. Look, this is the stupidest thing I couldn't make the turn so I did a 360 rotate I was having a minor breakdown here but then I got the wheels back on the buggy the horse hitched on to the PTO attachment what This is the corner that got me. You have to be very careful. Down to the right. 
you don't want to go. Last year I fell down there, and that was that was the end of my race. This time though, a rock gremlin's got my swing arm. It's got a hold of it. I'm like, what the heck's going on? I was frustrated. One, two, three. There you go, thanks. Travis, my trail angel, comes and releases the grip of the rock ghoul, or Dude. gremlin. You get what you give, so I help. Can I go over? One, two, three. Travis back. You see, he gets a rock gremlin as well. All right, let me pull. Let's get the front up. This was me last year. This is what happened. One, two, three. Once you got up this little incline, there were these rock piles that you'd have to throw yourself at. Like that one, and then after it, there's this here, and it's it, not a comfortable thing throwing yourself over these. Especially when you're starting to get a little tired. I think I'm out of water. What? Already? I got an extra liter. We're gonna have to fill it. I think I got a pit for gas, dude. Somehow my emotional support animal is down here, Tom. <laughs> he's gonna hate me for calling him that, but he's like walking it with me, taking some selfies for the gram. <laughs> or maybe for his Tinder profile. Ladies. Gnarly in here, man. It's so gnarly. So, you get to the start, just go get some water. At the thing, I At got the water. pit? No. What? Alright. Yeah. We're, we, we gotta. The end of the first lap. Yeah, okay. so uh, over there. You, you want water? How about we get to the top of the hill and get you water, okay? Alright. There was this crazy downhill right here. Again, it doesn't do it justice, but it was pretty sketchy. I, I'm getting towards the end of the lap, and I told Tom, like, we got to get a figure out a pit strategy here. I, I got to get gas. I, I mean, I think if I'm going out for another lap, I have to. So I go through scoring. It says I'm in 31st. So hey, I, <laughs> can I go back to my pit? Considering how I was okay. doing, almost dead last, we've made some good progress. Our pit strategy. Our pit strategy. Is All right, I got to get the heat. I got to get the heat out. This is the, the most amateur pit operation. I, the, we were caught with our pants down. The idea of pitting, we're like, oh, you know, we, I hardly ever make a lap, let alone have to go out for a second one. But this year's track was much easier, I think, on that first lap. So it's kind of cool because it allows you to kind of come through, get some good progress, get some good riding in. And then it's the second lap where the real beatdown begins. Yeah! Playing around here. I was moving pretty good on the beginning of this second lap. This is all stuff we already saw, so we'll skip ahead. I did have some serious execution issues in 409. I struggled bad. I was starting to fall apart slightly here. Oh, starting to cramp. I'm starting to cramp. I'm at the wall, but I've, I've literally hit a wall. We started to get into the second lap only stuff here. Wow. This is big balls. It's a new section. Man, it's this is when it starts picking up. The other thing that was in the back of my mind is that there's another race the next day. Five hour hard narrow tomorrow. I just don't know how I'm gonna hold up, so that's just in my head. Oh, but then this was the worst. You okay? Oh, yeah. Oh. oh. Big slam down. I got taken down and pinned for two seconds. That's it. Match is over. But that one, that one, I was like, oh boy, I'm making mistakes now. Big balls section. I mean, I'm fighting. I'm punching at them. They're a punching bag. I'm pushing my way up them. It took a lot of energy. I was real. I, I was pushing, literally pushing up big balls. Finally, get to the top, and then it's the part going down that. Gets 
gets me. Ah. Mm. Ah. Ooh. This was a cramp that I have oh. never felt before. I thought my leg, I thought I tore a muscle. That's what it felt like. I'm like, my thigh ripped in half. And then it subsided some, but it, the downhill was so tricky. These were so, I'm telling you, one of the gnarliest, some of the gnarliest downhills I've ever done because all the rocks are rolling. And then this, look at this rock ramp. Yes. Cut back. We're at Uncle Joey's garage. Most of the guys have been going this way. So. Riley's chain up there broke at the top. He had to come all the way back down. That blows. <clears throat> I need another. Waffle? I need. You gotta ride. You gotta ride up this. I can't. I don't know if I could. You got gummy worms. <laughs> I'll take anything. I'll take anything right now. A massage would be nice. I should hire a masseuse to come with me at the races. It'd be like a semi-truck, a portable Asian spa truck that'll come to all the races. I might be onto something here. Uncle Joe's garage here is a beat down, but the checkpoint is not too far after it. That's the only thing keeping me going at this point. Especially knowing I have to race tomorrow. That's what's got me thinking. Like, I just don't know if I can keep carrying on. If I if I gotta race tomorrow. God almighty. Wow, we got up it. We got up it. And then there were some even hairier downhills after this. My camera ran out at the end here, but luckily Chase was here filming. Had a couple tough sections left to push through. The checkpoint was within sight. But man, it ramped up. I mean, this this second lap only stuff went from zero to 100 real quick. Checkpoint is right at the bottom of this. I made it, and that's where I called it. Good job. The stuff after this checkpoint was worse. Uh, this was what, the first checkpoint on the second lap. Second lap only sections. It's it's out of my league. I'm I'm good. I'm done. That stuff was sketch. Hey, can we like room for this guy? He's gonna keep going here. This is the beginning. I mean, look at that. No, that's what I mean. This second lap, oh, yeah, this, this stuff is just another level. I'm good. A lot of people are stuck on this one. There's sure. a heartbreak or something after this oh, on the other side. Oh, oh yeah, that's that's yeah, where Adam tough. was stuck for a while. Uh, yeah, no, there's no hope for me. <laughs> I was definitely happy to pull off at this point. I finished 45th, which I feel like I could have done better. A little disappointed with that. Now that I've done this and raced three days of Hard Enduro, I actually felt really good on Monday, which we're going to get into. That race is coming up. I think I could push as just as hard as I can. I felt fine the next day. I felt even better. So that's something I learned this year, and we're going to bring it next year. By the way, Sandra Gomez finished 26, and she was back where I was. And Adam, with his holdup way behind, finished 27th. So there's no excuse for having a problem in the beginning in a long six-hour hard and like this. You can really make some time up if you're good. Thank you, guys. Stay tuned for the Shotgun Heart Scramble on deck.